episode of The Naked Turner. Today I was out here in my garage and um, one of my subscribers had mentioned that my videos weren't being as um, how-to oriented lately and I really want to apologize for that. Uh, my work schedule has been creating a uh, sort of disconnect from my more lengthy how-to videos as well as the fact that the editing and uploading process uh, on those longer videos is much more time intensive, it takes a lot more out of me to get those posted. So I want to apologize for not posting as much, but I am trying to show you what I'm working on still. And every once in a while, I'll throw in a couple quick little seconds of turning, uh, hoping that people still catch some tips and tricks on how to rub your bevel or how to just make a nice clean cut through a nice single pass clean cut or some sheer scraping or whatever it might be. Um, I will get back to making more how-to oriented videos. It's just right now I've kind of got a lot of stuff going on at work and then of course because of the fact that now we're in good weather and things I have a lot of stuff going on at home as well. So I hope you understand and I will keep posting but some of the videos are going to maybe be quick look videos or quick how to's or stuff like that. So I uh, hope you enjoy and hope you keep watching. Okay, so the reason I wanted to come out here and show you uh, a little bit about what I was working on was because I have this beautiful piece of walnut that was gifted to me by Mr. John Bray uh, from El Cerrito Woodworks. And it's got some incredible figuring in here. And uh, I just turned the bottom and using my simple uh, roller ball. This is basically just a burr bit inside of a piece of quarter inch brass tubing with a little magnet at the end so that it doesn't fall out. That was a suggestion by one of my subscribers because I just had it inside of this tube. But now I have a magnet chucked up in the bottom of this. And this is just a handle that Miguel Sanchez had inspired me to make. A nice long handle that I use for all kinds of different stuff. Drilling, it holds some of my tool bits. Uh, and now it also holds this little burring bit. Anyway, I was able to get that nice little sunburst rosette design there uh, using this. I'll probably do another little feature here in the middle of it, like a small sun uh, using my point tool. Uh, but just wanted to show you this piece. I am going to flip it around and do some hollowing once I have a couple coats of finish on. And what I did today is I'm using this uh, clear wood finish show, um, uh, lacquer as a sanding sealer. And then I'll do my normal finish on top of that. I'll uh, do some Yorkshire grit after I do this sanding sealer. Probably I'll do one more coat of the sanding sealer and then I'll Yorkshire grit afterward. And that'll give me a really nice surface for applying a friction rub finish. Oh, by the way, I'm not turning naked, but I do have a hole in my shirt. Okay, I think you'll be able to see this. I've got this incredible finish on this because of the fact that I did two coats of a lacquer sanding sealer. And then the Yorkshire grit. And then my friction rub finish. I'm finding I like the ham Hampshire sheen for certain things, but to get a really, really high gloss like this, even after I apply the Hampshire sheen, sometimes I'll come back and do a friction rub finish. But hopefully you can appreciate the uh, beauty of the figuring and finish on this piece of walnut. Uh, sorry this is not a how-to video so much, but I did just want to share with you and it's more to inspire people to get out on their lathe and go try some new things. Um, I've been doing things the same way for a long time and it's always good to try new things. I uh, encourage people to do that. All right, just so people don't get bored, I'm gonna show you a little bit of the hollowing process on this. Always remember to wear your safety gear. I'm putting on my shield now and I'm in reverse gear. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is flatten out. I've got my uh, tailstock brought in for a little bit of additional safety. I'm spinning up here right around 2100 RPM, which is a little fast for this, 
but this is some burly figured wood in there so it's grains going in a lot of different directions so my hopes is by turning a little faster I'll slice across some of those weird pieces of grain surfacing paths. Pull cut toward that outer edge. My uh, hunk. My tail stop is in the way a little bit here, so... There we go. That's about the wall thickness I want. So here, there's a piece of pith that was growing right through here. Here it is on this outer edge. And I think I'm going to get rid of that completely because it looks like it's going to keep chipping out. Let's see if that got rid of it up the edge here now. Just about gone. One more little pass there. Okay. Feels like it's gone. Yep. Okay, good. So now I'm going to back off my tailstock because it's just really in the way at this point. And Start refining this inside edge here. This is a beautiful piece of walnut. And you can drill this out first. Some people choose to do that, but because I was using it to stabilize my center, um, I'm just going to nibble it away. And I like to do it like this. Then I come in with a pull cut. That way I'm pushing, I'm pushing towards my um, scrolling jaw chuck. I'm putting less stress on the uh, mortise that I have, the expansion mortise that I have. And you can see it's cutting nicely when I do this. You can see I got a really nice glossy finish. This is like, I could start sanding at 400 grit on that piece right there. That's how smooth it is. And that's because I'm rubbing my bevel. If you watch this, I'm rubbing my bevel. Straight 
straight down. You're going to hear some fireworks. Hopefully it doesn't make me jump. Some of these are M2000s are really loud. Okay. Now, I'm going to check the depth because there's nothing worse on a beautiful piece of wood like this than having so much fun that you just punch through the bottom of it. So what do I got here? I got uh, about an inch and an eighth. And I'm pretty much real close. I could maybe go another eighth of an inch or so. So let's refine the rest of the bowl, then I'll come back down and do some scrape passes on that. some thickness out here that I'll get rid of. consistent wall thickness through this piece just a little thicker here in the radius so let me get some of that out if I can Now I'll do a push cut down into that. There we go. And lower tool handle so I can rub my bevel coming out of it. There we go. Okay, so now I'm just going to do some scraping in here, but I wanted to show you that part of the process. I'll check back in with you after I do a little scraping. Or actually, let me show you some of that scraping process. Coming in now with my Robert Sorby half inch heavy duty scraper. Okay. That's about as thin as I want to go, right? Right there. <coughs> <coughs> okay, and that's really nice. Now I'll just be doing some sanding. Um, there is still this piece of pith in here, uh, but that's fine. This is going to be like a nut bowl or something like that anyway. So it'll be a walnut nut bowl and uh, having a little tiny little piece of pith that runs through here it's not a big deal it's running at a severe angle and it's very strong piece of wood i'm not worried about this is actually not the central pith this is a pith of a branch from this piece of walnut so i can go a little bit more maybe right there in the center light cuts and I'm up at 2100 RPM 
lots of RPM and a real light pass. And uh, that feels really good. Now I'm just gonna do some sanding. I have one little lump right there actually that I feel. Let's see if I can get rid of that. And it's from that little piece of schmutz on my on my tool rep. Right there. I'm just shaving microns right now. Okay. There we go. Now there's no no ridges, no bumps. There's a little one. Uh, you know what? There is a little one right there. Let me see if I can get that out with a little shear scrape. Or not a shear scrape, but just a negative rake scrape. There we go. Doing a negative rake scrape using the inside flute of my bowl gouge and just kind of using it as a negative rake scraper, just like that. Okay, there we go. Looking good. A little sanding and then I'll check back in. All right, so here's the inside now with a coat of sanding sealer on it. I'll do some uh, Yorkshire grit, some buffing, and then I'll put a friction rub finish on there. I'm not even going to bother filling this little hole with any epoxy or anything because I like it. I don't want to sully it up by filling it with anything. Um, I was thinking about putting some thick CA glue in there, <clears throat> but I think I'm just going to let it. Uh, I think I'm just going to let it be. Okay, so I just put two coats of lacquer sanding sealer on. Now I'm down spinning slow around 360 RPM. A little bit of Yorkshire grit. Alright, so I'm not sure where that cut out, but anyway, I just did the Yorkshire grit over two coats of the... Um, lacquer sanding sealer and I really like this now uh, I'm gonna put on some friction rub finish and uh, this piece will be ready to pull off the lathe I'll show you some stills when I'm done and hey if you like this video please give me a thumbs up make a comment like and share and if you're a subscriber thank you so much for your continued support and if you're not a subscriber please do me a favor take the time to click subscribe I think you'll enjoy my channel and hopefully you'll learn something and maybe even be inspired. All right, so here it is, the finished bowl. I think it turned out real nice. There you go. Instead of some stills, there's a quick little video showing what it's like. And you can hear my granddaughters in the background here on this 4th of July.